Mother Day, you know, how do you feel like that impacted you at all? Um, I feel like it helped us a lot because obviously we practice in the morning, so um, we're used to getting up early, you know, getting the day started early. So being able to come out here with our fans, with the energy that they had, you know what I'm saying? And like I said, we had already been prepared for our early games. So coming out here and making plays for them and just to see them happy, it, it makes us happy. So we got the win and um, can't be done with that guy for that. And when you saw number 88 out there, Hakeem Butler, just go, they keep attacking him, play after play, they're going at him. I mean, what did, what was going through your head, what's going through your mind of stopping him? Somebody stop him. Yeah, somebody <laughs> stop him. Uh, we got confidence in our defense. Uh, they well equipped just like we are on offense. So uh, I knew they would need more than just him to win the game. So I was confident in that. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Gave him one uh, early, throwing the out route. Uh, Giovanni slips. It's going to be completion. Goes right to the corner. Uh, pick six. And then, uh, I mean, it, for whatever reason, we just, you know, um, it's just one of those games. You get momentum, you lose it, couldn't get it back. So, listen, they're a good ball team. Uh, they won today. It's the way it goes. That's the game of football. Right. Questions for AJ? Right. Go ahead. AJ, you guys did a great job in the first two games of the season protecting the ball. You didn't have any turnovers. Uh, does losing the turnover battle, is that the sole reason you guys lost today, or were there other things that played into it? Well, I don't, I don't know. What was the turnover battle? I don't know where it is. Um, How many turnovers did they have? Two. Yeah, it was like three to two or three to three. That's what I wrote. Yeah, I mean, listen, you always want to try to win the turnover battle, but like I said, you know, the, the pick six at the beginning, uh, I mean, it, it's a completion 99 out of 100 times. <laughs> and, uh, that feels a little slippery. We got, you know, a player over our toes, and um, but he slips and he goes to him. It is what it is. Uh, and so, we, I mean, we gave him a head start off of that. Um, but... Yeah, you, you definitely want to try to win the turnover battle uh, when you can. Hakeem Butler, I mean, he was phenomenal for you at the end of that first half. Um, what kind of went into not using him as much as you were in the second half? Well, the second half they played uh, a lot more zone, not as much man. Um, and listen, that's that's Greg Williams. Greg, it's gonna it's gonna be a chess match. Uh, so it was a. Uh, you know, a, a good deal today, like us going back and forth with each other. Um, he had some calls where uh, we got him and then he got us on a couple. So it's a game of football, just uh, part of it. Anybody else? Right at the end there, you throw that touchdown pass off the recovered fumble. You guys get it back fourth and 15, obviously, the play you've had before. How comfortable was everybody there? Was the crowd getting to them at all, or was everybody just ready to drive? No, I, listen, I, I, and I will, and I'm going to speak on this. Um, I, the league's got to come figure out a better way to get some of these calls right. Uh, and we, we had three or four times in the game where the refs came back to us and said, we missed that call and apologized. Straight up apologized. And it was times where you can't miss those calls. Like, keep one in the first half, keep our drive alive. They missed the call. Um, the intentional grounding on Jordan um, right before they kicked the field goal. One, he went outside the pocket. There was no receiver around. And the ball didn't make it past the line of scrimmage. And so they come back. So either he's down, you roll him down, or it's intentional grounding. But they come back after and say, we missed that call. And my, my thing is, even, and I want to see the clip, but I think it was helmet to helmet at the end on fourth and 15 on me. And then the dude power drives me at the end. Like, it, it's some of these things where we got to protect guys too. Like, and I'm not talking about just myself, like, but I just, I think we can't come back on, on some of these plays and say, hey, and apologize and say, that's our bad. Like, that's things we got to get right, and, and, and hopefully, um, I mean, we haven't had a defensive pass interference in three games. I've never played football in my entire life and not had one defensive pass interference. Is there any of those you feel like they should have challenged, or is, or is that rule like is that is that rule matter? Like, yeah, I, I, 
Well, it, it, it's just a, it depends on when because you don't want to blow it uh, if they don't change it. But uh, I mean, it, the only thing I'll say is, like I said, it, 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 it hurts a little bit. Um, and it's not taken away from DC. DC won today. They won the game. They played better. It is what it is. But it hurts when the refs keep coming back to you multiple times in the games, three, four times, and say we missed that call. Yeah, that that can't happen. But so when when things like that happen, does that make you not want to scramble, not want to run, not want to do those things? Do you feel like you aren't protected? No, that? I mean I'm still going to play my game. Um, but uh, that just. I just think we it, we can't miss. I mean, we have Dean up there, and he's done an unbelievable job. Like, I, I think we need to take more time, especially on that play. Like, they should have came together as a group and talked. Um, and that's that's my biggest thing because that that changes games. That changes momentum in games. So, um, but listen, DC won today. Uh, they played better. Listen, we got to bounce back. Um, play Arlington at home. Uh, I hope St. Louis has it absolutely rocking and. Uh, I want us to try to sell every freaking seat we possibly can and um, and have an atmosphere that's unlike any other. So I'm looking forward to getting back home, getting back to the grind this week, fixing what we need to, to fix, watch the film, and uh, we got to come back next week and be a better team. All right. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. yep. All right, well, thank y'all for being here. Um, obviously, you guys tell our story, and uh, the XFL has have a really good story with a lot of good players, good coaches, so we thank you guys for what y'all do. Uh, today's game was an important game, obviously, for both teams. Uh, both teams have had success, came in with really good records. Uh, so uh, we have a lot of respect for uh, the St. Louis team. Uh, we knew uh, that team had the characteristics of a team that plays hard, that plays discipline, uh, didn't turn the ball over a lot, and they were going to stay in the fight. <clears throat> and they've had chances at the end of the game to win. And I mean, hey, we, uh, that's what it was today. Stay in the fight. Had an opportunity to win the game there at the end. Uh, our team, uh, you know, there's some things obviously that we have to clean up, but we're still proud of our guys for uh, being resilient, uh, continue to c compete, right? There are times where um, the score was tied, right? And obviously got a little sloppy at the end uh, with the being on the one yard line backed up. Um, but we'll get that fixed all in all. I'm not going to apologize for a win, and uh, we, have, we got that. And kudos to the St. Louis team. They came out, played well, competed well. Coach Beck had his team ready to play. You guys came out hot. Um, I know that's something you guys have been working on. What can you say that you worked on that showed um, in that first quarter? Yeah, I think uh, offensively, uh, we talked about getting off to a, a fast start. We had not done that in the previous games. Uh, obviously, our defense, right, they, they've been playing pretty solid for us. Uh, but it was good to see our offense get rolling like that, <clears throat> sustained drives, get long drives, guys finishing runs, uh, quarterbacks making good reads. Um, obviously, it's a 1 o'clock game, so sometimes, you know, that, that, that's a change, right, for what we've had over the last two weeks. But uh, we definitely talked about it. Uh, we talked about you know, coming out and warm ups and all that stuff and being ready to rock and roll. So coaches did a good job of, uh, we call it Paul Revere and that message. And then obviously the players did a good job of accepting that, taking ownership of it, and then going out and competing. Hey coach, we just talked to AJ McCarron. I'm not sure if you caught any of what he said while you were out there, but he pointed to three or four times where the officials came over and said that that was the wrong call, that they had missed something. <clears throat> a couple of examples, he said, um, the last play of the game on the 4th and 15, he said it was helmet to helmet. He pointed to uh, Jordan Tamu having a uh, intentional grounding that maybe wasn't called. Uh, what did you see out there from the officiating, and, and do you share that sentiment, or do you think that that's just unfounded? Well, we try to stay away from the BCD, blame, complain, and defend. Um, the referees have a tough job. Uh, we have a tough job. Everybody have a tough job to go out and compete. Uh, things are happening extremely fast out there. Uh, I think those guys are trying to communicate 
and uh, make the calls the best that they can. Uh, but I will tell you this, there are some calls that I wish I had called differently, right? So it happens, it's a part of the game. Uh, and I'm sure if you go and look at it, there were some that was missed on our end as well. So uh, we have a lot of respect for uh, their quarterback. He's a, he's a good player. He's you know, doing a lot of wonderful things for your team. Uh, he's an Alabama guy, so uh, we, we respect him and the way that he played. But uh, BCD for us, no blame, no complaint, no defense. Yeah, you kind of mentioned that maybe the league needs to do a better job of protecting guys. Of all the places that you've coached, do you feel that your guys are as safe at this level as other levels that you coach? Yeah, I don't think there's been another league that has talked more about safety than this league. There's been rules changed. There's been other things that have been adjusted uh, to, to secure the safety uh, of our uh, players. And I say ours, I don't just mean the D.C. defenders, but I'm talking uh, – the entire league, right? Uh, there are some things like, I mean, let's be real, right? There are some things we all can change and make better. And I think as we continue to go, as we continue to communicate, uh, I know those things will continue to get better. Dean, uh, who's over the head of officials, I mean, you're talking about a legit guy that understands the game, knows about player safety, knows rules and regulations, has great experience. Uh, he sends out a video uh, every week of different things that have taken place in a game, uh, good and bad, saying that we need to switch it, change it, we'll do better, or you guys as a team need to do better. So uh, as we continue to go, as we continue to uh, make adjustments, that's just what it is, right? I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's a part of the game. All right, thank you, Coach. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Congratulations to DC. Um, it's a great atmosphere here in this game, and uh, both teams play their butts off, uh, especially in the first half. You know, we like to not turn the ball over, but you know, I, I'm proud of our guys for bouncing back. Uh, second half, it was who was going to come out and, and fight and, and take it. And quite frankly, we didn't fight enough, and we didn't get it. So um, we'll learn from it, and uh, you know, we'll take that one on the chin, and we'll come back and we'll, we'll get better and uh, be ready for next week. Uh, as far as the end of that game is concerned, um, you know, I take full responsibility for our guys. Um, you know, that, that's how I coach my players. Uh, my players, um, you know, should have a better understanding of how we want to be as a team. That's not the culture. Uh, that's not the, the, the way that I, I've told these guys I want them to be. Um, I don't know who started it, why it got started. It Obviously, clearly throughout the game, things were happening that I saw visually. And we have to find better ways to control that. So uh, on my end, uh, that that's not who we are, and I got to fix that. So that's on me. That's on none of my players, and I'll make sure that's corrected. And um, you know, and definitely not the way we want to be from a culture standpoint. And uh, you know, feel bad that happened, but it is what it is, and uh, you know, we'll get better from it. All right. No questions. So let's get some more, coach. Hey coach, uh, we just talked to AJ, yeah. and he mentioned that maybe three or four times throughout the game there were calls that were missed that the refs were coming over and getting to you guys that may have been missed. He pointed to a few, um, <clears throat> the Jordan um, intentional grounding, maybe a helmet to helmet that was missed on a fourth or fifteen. Uh, what do you respond to something like that? And how do you coach a guy up and, and let him know that you just got to that? Yeah, you know, you know, I only have one challenge. Uh, I had to use that, and it worked out for us. Um, you know, yeah. There were some plays that happened in the game uh, that they came up to me and said, you know, hey, we missed that one. But, you know, when one leads to a field goal, another one leads to you know, a first down or a continuation of downs. You know, what, what can you say? I mean, I'm disappointed that I didn't get those calls. You know, I, I thought I saw what we saw. Um, you know, I just, uh, you know, we just got to, they got to be better, I guess. I, I really don't know what to say. I can't speak for them. You know, my job is to watch it on the sidelines and articulate anything to them that I see. 
Uh, I felt there was a lot of conversation between us and the officials coming to me today. So whatever whatever token that is, I, I appreciate and respect the fact that they came up to me and said that they missed a couple of calls. But at the end of the day, I got to do my job. They got to do their job. So uh, hopefully we can clean that up. Uh, those things cost you know teams points the game. So uh, those weren't the only reasons why we lost, of course. But you know, of course, we we get those opportunities back. You never know what happens. But it's hearsay at this point. Uh, we had a, we had the ball plenty of times in the second half where we could have, you know done some things, driven down the field. You know, I always like our team's uh, fight as far as playing four quarters, but we just came up short today. It was a little too much, and um, you know we'll be better from it. Had a quick follow up to that. AJ said maybe the league has to do a better job of protecting guys at all your levels of football, whether it was AAF or college or wherever you were. Yeah. Do you feel like your guys are as safe in this league as they yeah. are in other leagues? Yeah, I mean, you know, listen, I, I, these guys aren't first time officials. I mean, you know. When you're watching the game unfold, you see some early tension. You know, you, you have an opportunity there, you know, as officials to make sure you can handle it. You can call flag, you can do whatever you want to do. It's my job to see that and, and put them on notice for those things and talk to them about that. Say, listen, we don't want this to escalate, regardless of who it's us, then whoever it is, let's try to squash it when we can. And some plays happen throughout the game. I just that they were close. You know, B Hill gets tackled. Uh, several guys behind the line of scrimmage, the whistle blows, and it kind of gets twisted over, lands on his head. I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's just an opportunity to squash it there. That's that's just that's not my call. But, uh, you know, I, I try to alert them throughout the game and just remind them about that. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, we have the incident that we had at the end. You know, whether that was the reason or not, I think just big picture, we have to be smarter as a football team. Uh, we have to know how to act. And, um, you know, if, if a guy pushes us around or we think a guy does something to us and we're, we're not professional enough to step away and back away, then, you know, I, I don't know what to tell that guy. You probably, you know, whatever we see on film, that clearly doesn't fit the mold and culture that we are, those guys won't play. I mean, bottom line, because they're not gonna, they're not gonna make the next level if they wanna do that. So, um, you know, visually just trying to pull our guys back. I think all of us, coaches, players, we gotta be smart there. Both sides, you know, I got a lot of respect for Reggie. Clearly, he doesn't want anything to happen that way as, as well. So, uh, but for me personally, we just have to do a better job of being professionals. And that starts with me, unfortunately. So, uh, I'll change that. I'll get that fixed and, you know, uh, you know make those things uh, make those things never happen again. Uh, Darren Shepard, yeah. um, just on the positive side, he put you guys in some great positions um, to score. Uh, is there anything about him that you want to incorporate more into your offense? No. Um, yeah, he's a playmaker for us. You know, he, he never smiles. He never gets mad. Uh, he just plays ball. And, you know, it, it, it's hard to get big plays in, in the kickoff return game. But, uh, you know, our guys have one-on-one -on -one blocks. And he's able to make a guy, a couple guys miss on both of those instances. And they were huge. We needed that second one because we really hadn't done much on offense. Got us pushed down there. But they're just monster plays for us. And the guy was hurt. You know, he was gassed. He hydrated. I mean, he's given us our all. I mean, that was going to be his last big play for us. I knew it was. I saw him walking off the field, and I thanked him for it because we needed that spark. Um, as far as getting him the ball more in the offense, you know, we have a lot of good players. AJ knows that. He trusts all those guys. You know, we're just trying to put our guys in the best uh, scenarios and situations to make plays for us. And uh, I'd love to get him the ball more, just like, you know, a couple other guys when those opportun uh, opportunities come. But uh, he's a big part of our team, our offense, our special teams. And, and hopefully, you know, it's more cramping and stuff like that. He'll bounce back next week. And listen, if we can find more ways to get him the ball, we will, because he deserves it. He's a great player, and, and I let him know that every single week because, you know, he does it by example. You know, he's one of those leaders that, you know, uh, guys need to watch how he acts every single day. And uh, he's definitely a pro. So I appreciate what he did today, and uh, he's, he's a key component of our team. All right. Everybody good? Thank you. Good. All right. Let's go. It'll be it for us. So. Thanks. 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 Than